it legitimately took me longer to fill all these magazines by digging darts out of the dart catch than it will probably take for me to film this entire video. Do you like full auto? Of course you do. Who doesn't? While it may not be the most economical way to tag somebody out with a foam dart, it certainly is one of the most fun. But how fast do you like your full auto? Do you like the rapid strike with its lethargic yet somewhat usable full auto? How about the nerf hyperfire with its little bit better, faster, more usable full auto? Maybe something like the uh, Busby Destiny of old that would dump its entire clip in no time whatsoever. Maybe my deleter mod, that monstrosity that was two hyperfires bolted together with replaced pushers that hit something like 36 darts a second. Or how about something like this? An absolutely tiny minuscule dart hose of a blaster that is uh, <laughs> basically a magic trick. That's dumb fast. The Lepus, one of the smallest nerf blasters I've ever gotten my hands on, and yet it's also one of the fastest firing and also one of the most usable in that category. The Lepus was designed by Jackrabbit Nerfer. You know what else they made? The Bulwark, a blaster I did a video on not too long ago that I was really enamored with because of how cool it was. And the funny thing about the Lepus is this is the Mark II. There was a Mark I, and I've never seen a video where anybody talk about this thing, and I'm trying to figure out why we all just kind of ignored it. This is about as simple and effective as foam dart blasters can get. This thing is microscopic. The magazine that it feeds from is actually bigger than the blaster. It is tiny. I've seen dart holders that are bigger than this thing. Here's everybody's favorite poster child, the hammer shot, and here's a Lepis. Yeah, you can kind of tell the Lepus is tiny. And I think the best part about the Lepus is how accessible it is. This one was sent to me by Frontline Foam, and I thank them very much for sending this off to me because I didn't have to build it, because I honestly don't think I would have ever actually built a Lepus had one not been sent to me. And better yet, looking at the prices for one of these, how much do you think this costs? Well, I'll tell you straight up, the hardware kit is $45. That's with no printed parts. With printed parts, a do-it-yourself kit we're running you 65 65 dollars and maybe an hour of your work in order to get something like this but let's say you didn't want to do anything you wanted one pre-built and shipped to your door ready to go out of the box 110 bucks those prices are absolutely ridiculous compared to other things on the market that fill the same kind of niche as this. It should be noted that none of those prices include the battery, and the battery for this thing, as you can probably imagine, is incredibly small and almost specialized for this purpose. That doesn't mean that you can't have a different battery on it. As you can tell, there's some space on here if you want to like Velcro a new LiPo up here just to save on a couple of bucks. That is something you can totally do, but it's not something that has to be done. And while this is the fastest firing rate that you could currently get right now, if you want something more manageable that's not 3,000 rounds per minute, yes, quite literally, there are, of course, more practical options for rate of fire. And they have been talking, and I think this is something that should be done. This one is set up for me to swap out the motor as I please. I do have a second motor, a 600 RPM motor, which you can see firing footage of here. Yeah, it's, uh... That's a little bit more of what you would expect. It might even be a tad bit too slow. And that's definitely, again, way more economical and practical, but I do like overkill and this is actual overkill and I could swap these out really easily. And while that is a little bit more work, I think Frontline Foam should just stick with that. That way they could sell the other motors separately and get more money from people who want to buy additional motors and tweak this as they go. I think that's great because this thing is so, I'm gonna do it right now on camera. It's stupidly simple. In fact, if you have a printer, 
doing a hardware kit is serviceable because uh, this is one piece. This is the top cover. The cage is another piece, so that's two. The pusher contains two pieces, the actual pusher and the piece that rotates on the motor itself. So that's up to four, the main body, which is five, and then the grip itself, which is six. That's it, there's no trigger mechanism things. There's not even a mag release. It's all friction fit in the blaster and works incredibly well. As you can see, there's the battery, there's everything in there and the flywheels, which are the hurricane style flywheels. And I'm amazed this thing with such a simple pusher mechanism works as well as it does. Now, this is not the only blaster in existence that uses this kind of pusher mechanism. In fact, when I talked about a Nerf Uzi when I did a video on the Cyber Ninja, apparently nobody knew about the Woozy, the actual Nerf Uzi that was developed by Colin Wood. That thing is awesome, and I desperately want two Select Fire 3000 RPM Woozies so I can absolutely just have basically two mag-fed shotguns in each hand. And I really hope you like and subscribe because not only do I have to have a video on that in the very near future, I'm hoping this video does well enough that I could course uh, Frontline Foam into building two of those for me. So yeah, 60% of you aren't subscribed. Maybe now, maybe with a mag dump, I can get you to hit that button kind of like this. <laughs> That's worth a subscribe. I am slowly running out of magazines. But yeah, slower fire rate, more practical, but something like this is a heck of a lot more fun. And what could something like this be used for? I should start off by noting that this thing is talon fed only. And I do have one of the curved magazines, but historically the springs in these are not good enough to feed this thing fast enough. A slower RPM motor will work, but the 3000 RPM motor, which is 50 darts a second, and I calculated it at 41.5 darts a second, although my math could be a little bit wrong, is a bit much for it. Uh, let's give that a shot too. <laughs> that's the first time that's happened. That was 20 darts. And it actually has recoil because it's shoving that foam through the wheels so fast. I love this thing. Now it's accessible. It's inexpensive in my opinion. It is absolutely tiny. The downsides are there were some concessions to get it to this point. As you can probably notice, those are the triggers. They are literally just micro switches with the like springy tabs removed, which I'm guessing was done so you wouldn't accidentally fire this thing. You actually have to like really concentrate on where the pads of your fingers are to hit those buttons because they are very small and not very protruding at all. And there is, again, no mag release. The magazines are completely friction fist. There's a plastic indent in there that stops the magazine from coming out of position or anything like that. It's not gonna move, and it requires a bit of force to remove, which means you can't just drop magazines. Something like this is not developed to be how I would want to use a blaster like this. When I'm talking about like building a woozy with select fire, I want to use two of those as a primary. That's what I want to do more than anything. Something like this is almost relegated completely to a secondary or tertiary. It has almost no other use. You could, of course, primary anything, but something like this is not really conducive to do so. It is magazine fed, but that rate of fire, Let's talk about that rate of fire. Many of you would like that 600 RPM fire rate because that's way more practical and your magazine will last a lot longer. When you have something that fires as fast as this, what would that be useful for? Well, there's really only two situations that I can think of. The first one is HVZ. If there is a gigantic horde and you really want to anger that horde, I don't think a lot of people would call their shots in this scenario, but just putting a cloud of 17 or 20 darts just up in the air and have it rain down on them all in a matter of a second, well, that would confuse a lot of people and lead to a lot of tags. If they're too close, obviously you're just going to end up hitting one person or a couple of people multiple times each. But if you do it right, a quick spray of darts in the air could tag out a good portion of a horde. But what if there's another target in a more competitive scenario and you absolutely do not want to risk not tagging them out when they appear? Maybe they're a high value target for you or your team, or they're just not visible enough, not enough of them is sticking out behind cover that you feel like you can tag them. Something like this will make sure that you're pretty much gonna hit them no matter what. They barely have enough time to figure out what's going on when it's drawn. And well, it's 17 darts, good luck dodging that. And bonus points, you don't even really have to aim. This thing, you just kind of point it at them and pull the trigger and there's a cloud of darts there. And honestly, how many of you have a blaster that shoots 50 darts a second right now? I didn't, and I built the deleter. 
that makes something like this almost a mainstay in pretty much any arsenal. Even if I don't plan on using it, as long as I can get a holster and stuff made for this, which I'm surprised, like, apparently there is a magnetic holster for this. I have nothing here right now. I just kind of stuff it in a pocket or I could put it on my gear and like literally on top of a mag pouch kind of thing because it barely takes up any more room. Yeah, there's no reason for me not to carry one of these. Typically, I wouldn't like to carry a tertiary or a secondary that uses the same magazines as my primary. But in this case, I think it's warranted because if I'm not going to use it, I can take the magazine out and pop it in my primary. If I am going to use it, well, the one time I'm going to want to use it is probably the time it's going to be useful. And at that price point, it's really hard to be beaten. I mean, we're talking... $65 for a do-it-yourself kit, a little bit of soldering. It can be done by pretty much anybody. It's a little more difficult if you've never soldered before, and honestly, I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend just getting a pre-made one, but you are gonna pay for Frontline Foam's time and effort to wire one up for you. But if you already have a printer, Look how few pieces you need to make one of these things, and it is amazing. And of course, the links for everything will be down in the description below. If you do not want to buy a hardware kit from Frontline Foam and you wish to source one yourself, they are all available pretty much on outofdarts.com. The motors are, of course, Fang revamps. The wheels are the Hurricane wheels. The pusher is the same pusher that he uses in his own Jupiter. The micro switches, the connectors, the wire, all that stuff is very easy to procure. I don't know if that's more economical. I would assume it would be less economical and it would be a little bit more work. I'm a little worried about trying to sort like the exact nut that this thing screws into, but maybe you can find that at a hardware store or something like that. Regardless, that is also an option, but if you want everything done for you, you don't have to worry about it. Again, Frontline Foam is the way to go. And I thank them profusely for sending me something like this because I have had a ton of fun. You have no idea the hundreds of darts I have shot out of this thing in pure joy. It is so much fun. And it's hitting well under 130. Well, it hits about 130 FPS if you single shot it, but trust me, unless you only load one dart in a magazine, you are never going to be single shotting this thing. And of course, with all the bog down on the wheels, because it's loading so many darts out of that, the ranges are a little bit above elite standard at the full auto dump truck as a flat shot angled, you'll hit about rivaled, which means it's probably hitting about 110 FPS, 115 when all things are said and done at that full auto dump truck. Now this is the Mark II, and I don't know what the Mark I looked like off the top of my head, but some decisions I would see that could be made for the Lepus. I don't really want to make it more difficult to print or anything like that than it already is, but I would like to see two things. One, I would like to see a dual stage variant. Some of us like our 170, 180 FPS monstrosities, and as far as I know, the dual stage setup, again, that came from the Category 5 cage that Foam Blast put out. Michelle, you have done excellent work. That has pretty much changed the hobby as far as I know when it comes to flywheelers. Yeah, I would like to be able to have that option if I want. It'd make it a little bit longer, but I don't really care. And also, this thing is pretty much begging for a tactical rail on the top. Maybe if you want to have it for, maybe you want to have it for a, some kind of sight, which is practically worthless. In my opinion, maybe a reverse rail would be better. That way you could undermount it on another flywheeler and have the option for your, like your Dominator. It's got those big long rails on it. You put a mistress key on top of it. You put one of these on the bottom of it. And then you have the 44 dart dr Dominator mag and this thing sticking off the front, which would be hilarious. But that way you can have the slow rate of fire. And if you absolutely need the panic button, you can just press this and empty everything. Slap a rail on the side of that that's hooked up to a proton pack. And then you'd pretty much be the ultimate HVZ master. Do you guys want to see that? Is that worth me doing? There are other setups that can use this exact pusher and probably hit the exact same firing speeds. I don't know how many of those that have been done. And the scariest part is there is a 6,000 RPM motor that apparently exists, but I don't think there's a magazine on the planet that could feed that many darts, which is super scary. But this is the fastest firing blaster I've got my hands on and all those other options, none of them are this compact. So I think the Lepus firmly fits in its own niche and design and a lot of people are gonna like it. And that's why I'm bringing it for you here today. And again, thanks to Frontline Foam, for showing this thing to me because I probably would have never bothered to print one out had it not been for them. There's links to Frontline Foam down in the description below and in the pinned comment down below. I'm Walcom S7. Thank you very much for watching this video. I wish I had more darts, but I certainly do not. Actually, wait, I think I have a partial magazine somewhere, right? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Don't load a hard tip dart in there. I thought I broke this thing for a second. Thank you very much for watching this video. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one. And I have 
a lot of stuff to show off right now. If you have not seen the YouTube story or my Instagram, get subscribed because I have some of the coolest things in the entire Nerf ecosystem to show off to you. Stay tuned. You gotta eye, eye, eye.